I want to move into session four, which is double by understanding your current strategy. How do you go from 350 never ending gardens to 1,000 never ending gardens to 100,000 never ending gardens to a million never ending gardens? Point one, we had that goal and we were committed to it. We had prayed about it until we had peace about the number. We had peace about the number. We had peace about the number. Just don't go off the end and come up with a number. Pray and say, God, is this a number that's pleasing to you? And until you get peace, you keep praying about the number. Okay, so let's say that this represents the new goal right here, and it's much larger, taller, more difficult, and this is where you, we were at the beginning. 1,000, 100,000, okay. This is the new goal. Strategy is simply, how do you go here to here? That's all strategy is. It's the how. This is the what. I was at 1,000, that's 100,000, that's the what. You set a goal before you know how. This is exactly anti-intuitive. Most people think it's foolish to set a goal unless I know how. It is not foolish. If you study how God set goals in the Old and New Testament, he never told people how first, he always gave the goal and scared them to death. That's why he says to Moses, don't be afraid. He says to Joshua, go do this. And what does God say? Don't be afraid. I want you to hear what I just said to you. It's profound. God gives us goals that frighten us. That's his normative approach. People think backwards and think, if I have fear, it's from the devil. No, if you have fear, it's probably from God. Because the goals he asks people to do for him bring fear. They bring fear because they're beyond what you ever imagined you can do. That's why you're afraid. If you're doing 1,000, if you'd have said to me back then, was I afraid about achieving 100,000? The answer was scared to death. Did we know how to do this? No, we did not. Did we have any idea how to do this? No, we did not. Why do I practice this? Because that's how God does it. That's why I practice it myself. I copy God. Wait. A disciple is like his master in all ways. Ask the question, how did God set goals? Did he tell people how to do it so they were comfortable, they knew how to do it, and then he gave it to them? Or did he give a goal without telling them how? And they had to walk by faith to get here. Which way? It's the second way. That's why I set goals this way. Okay. What you're doing here is a strategy. Strategy is the steps you take to do something. That's all. Last night we had a wonderful meal prepared at the place we were staying. It was lamb chops and it was an unbelievable dessert. Dessert was a special cheesecake and on top of it was, I don't know how to describe it. It was thin golden threads of sugar all like this. It looked like a piece of heaven coming in. <laughs> and we said to the chef, what is that? That's sugar. Wait, wait, how, how did you, how did you, how, 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 how strategy? That's the what. How is strategy? So we said to him, how'd you do this? I did it. How did you do it? We took brown sugar, brown sugar, not white sugar, no, brown sugar. What'd you do? Don't add anything to it, just put it on the fire. What do you do then? You take a wooden spoon. What's he giving me? Steps. You gotta understand, strategy is how. And strategy is always steps. We don't understand strategy, but we all live with strategy all day long. So what's he doing? He's telling us 
here's my strategy of how I make this angel hair. And I get this spoon going and it gets a little bit thinner, then it starts to thicken up and then I put the spoon down, I start using my fingers and I start making it thin and then he said, you have to watch me. Okay, what is that? Strategy. What is strategy? I do this first and this second and this third. Now, listen diligently. Everything I do is because I followed certain steps. Everything you do, because you followed certain steps. At break time, I wanted a cup of tea. There was no tea yet. I want tea. What is that? Goal, I want tea. Strategy, find someone. Do you know where the tea is? Yes. Can I get you some tea? That would be wonderful. What would you like in it? Some milk and some cream. Okay, I'll be right back. Goal, tea, strategy, find someone. Second, hopefully they'll suggest they can get it for me. <laughs> okay, now, this is hard, this is hard to do initially. Everything that you're doing to have 67 people in your church or to have 100,000 revenue or turnover in a year is from a current strategy. Grab it, grab what I'm saying. It's a concept, own it. You're producing 100,000. How are you doing it with the strategy? Well, I don't know what the strategy is. I know, that's the problem. You don't know the strategy. You just go to work and work. So how can you improve your strategy if you don't even know what it is? You can't, that's why you're stuck. Come on, that's why you're stuck. How can you improve the step you don't know you have? Come on, is the light going on? 98% of all companies don't even know their strategy. They just do it. We sell, okay. We service, okay. How do you sell? What? <laughs> One of our friends was overseeing us last week and he works at a restaurant here called Spur great restaurant, I love Spur, and he said they have a competition in the nation and I wanna win it. You do. I'm a waiter and I wanna win. I said, that's wonderful, what is that? That's an exponential goal. That young man's going places. He wants to be number one in the country and it's clear. What's your goal? The most productive people have very clear goals that mean a lot to them. The goal's gotta be really important to you or don't set it. So I said to him, what do you have to do to win the award? He says, I have to do two things. It has to do how much food I sell my customers. I get a percentage of that. I said, I said to myself, Spurs pretty sharp. They're motivating their waiters to sell more food. Smart. I said, hey, how else? By the amount of tips I get. I said, okay. What do you wanna do? What do you mean? How are you gonna win? I'm not gonna win so far. Okay, what do you have to do to win? I have to double. I said, that's not hard. What? That's not hard. How do you know it's not hard? Look at the gray hair. <laughs> I lived a long time. I know how to double. Yeah, but you're not a waiter. No, I'm, I don't wanna be a waiter. Well, how could you tell me how to double? Because I know how to drop a pin all the way down to the floor. And I said, what's your strategy? Ah, come on, get this together. What's your strategy? What do you mean? If you have to sell more food and you have to get a higher tip, those are two results. What's your strategy to sell more food? What's your strategy to get higher tips? I do the best I can. That's a terrible strategy. I said to him, what, what causes a person uh -huh, to give a big tip uh, if, I, if I serve them on time? Nah. If I get their food right? Nah. It's not? Nah, they'll give you a so-so tip. What causes a person to want to give a person a really big tip? I don't know. They like the person a lot. And 
that person shared something they want to do with the money, that means a lot to the person who heard it. What do you want? Oh, I, I want to get a new computer. Well, that makes a lot of sense. Why? I'm a graphic artist. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. So how do you increase your likability? What? What's your strategy to help the person like you? Scrub my teeth? No, 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 no. <laughs> okay, well, I'm trying to give you a, a particular big idea here. That strategy. And then how can you cause them to buy more food? I don't know. I said, okay, well, what does the average person get a starter? Nope. Does the average person get a dessert? Nope. Well, there it is, right in front of you. So the average person buys a meal, right? So if you had the average person either buy a starter or buy a dessert, what would happen to the amount you sold? I would, I would, I would double. Yes, you would. You would double. So we then talked about that strategy. And we talked about this strategy. And I said to him, be honest with me now. Can you double the amount of food that you sell now that you know the new strategy of how to do it? He said, it's not even hard. I said, no, it's not. And do you know how to double your tips? I do. I never thought of any of these things, but I can do those things. I said, that's right, you can. I said, the problem is you're not going to double. You're not, I'm not going to double? No, it's not going to double. Why not? Math. Math? Yeah, math. I said, if the average person came in and spent 10, and you double, they're going to spend 20. The numbers may not be right, but general principles. And if you are going to get a 10% or 12% tip, and you're now going to get, let's say, 24% tip, which would be an, a really good tip, but you now have twice as much food to get a tip from. You used to get 12% of this, which is a dollar twenty. You're getting 24% of twenty dollars, which is four eighty. You're going to grow four times. You're going to set a record for spur. Right? A lot of you are thinking, how did he do that again? <laughs> what am I trying to show you? Strategy is how. And how has to do with the steps. Why do churches not grow? They have a terrible growth strategy. <laughs> if you're 180 and you stay at 180, your strategy stinks. <laughs> it stinks. Throw it, rip it up and throw it away. It's terrible. If you have a goal to double in a year and you grow by 1 or 2%, what's the problem? It's not the goal. It's your strategy. You have a terrible strategy. What do you need to do? Well, what is your strategy? Until you know the steps, you can't improve them. Okay. Is this making sense to you? Is it a new way to think? I want to make it real clear. The first time you do anything, it's not easy. The first time you try to figure out your steps and strategy, you're going to have a hard time. Like I said to that young man, when they first come in, what do you do? I greet them and they ask them where they'd like to sit. Okay, that's your first step? Yes. What's the next thing you do? I bring them to the table. What's the next thing you do? I get them a um, menu. Nah. What do you mean nah? You didn't build a relationship yet. Don't give them, the second you give them the menu, the second their attention's off of you. You have to use likability here. What can you share about you, personally, that will make the customer say, well, how about that? Oh, I can tell them about, mm 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 mm. Oh, that's a great idea. Will they be interested in that? Yeah. Good. How did we do that? We wrote down every single step we took and we analyzed every step and said, this takes three steps to do this. How can we do it in one step? Yes, this takes too much work. Who can we delegate that to? How can we get the chiefs 
to let their people know we want to plant gardens and they'll dig up the ground and we won't have to. Whoa. How can we make it so instead of we're digging it all up, we get some volunteers who want to come with us to win the hat that we'll give to the people that help us plant gardens. And how can we pick out five kids between 15 and 30 that are with us that loves making gardens and they have a bunch of friends? How about if we challenge them? How about you get five friends that will work with you and I'm going to give you the leader, the leader cap and the leader shirt. And I want you to plant blah, 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 blah for each one of your five people. Can you do this? Yes, I can do this. And if you have five people who have five people, you sit and drink your Coke as they plant the gardens. Does it work? Absolutely it does. So when that businessman came and said, how do I plant 10,000 gardens in a week? I says, you cannot plant any gardens. If you plant a garden, you're wasting your time. You must get people who plant gardens and who have a team and they have a team and you'll plant 10,000 gardens and show them what to do. What's your strategy to double your business? You don't have one. If you're the average business person, you don't have one. You think, I'm going to have work harder this year and I'm going to have a sale. Well, isn't that a terrific idea? You need a strategy. Okay, take a look then at the four stages. I'm just going to quickly fill in your blanks for you because I've been teaching this to you. There's four stages of business competence. The stage number one is called unconscious incompetence, incompetence. The second stage is conscious incompetence. I'll come back and explain these as soon as you write them down. Number three is unconscious competence. And number four is conscious competence. It's kind of some long words which have some kind of humorous meanings. Stage number one is this. You're unconscious, incompetent, which means this. You don't know you don't know. You have no idea that you don't know. Second part is this conscious incompetence, which means I know I don't know how to do this. That's a good stage to be at. Stage three is unconscious competence. Some of the people in this room build up a business to a pretty good size and they're just a natural at it. Some people do that with church. They build it to a certain size. They don't really know exactly how they did it. They just came naturally. That's called unconscious competence. And they all plateau. Every one of those people that are a natural plateau. Why? They don't really know how they got there. They don't know the strategy they used. And the last part is the most powerful part. It's called conscious competence, which means you know what makes things work. You know how to use them yourself. And you know what's going to be the result. The exponential business model beneath it, we're talking about number one is the exponential goals. We're on point number two now, which is strategy. And in the future, we'll talk about markets and products and services. Next page. The first thing to do is inform yourself about business strategy. Number one, I've been teaching you this already, strategy identifies the steps necessary to achieve the business goals. That's what a strategy is. It's the steps necessary to achieve the business goals. Number two, strategy exists in all businesses, all businesses at all times, whether known or unknown. I've tested this with lots of business leaders. They don't know their strategy. They don't know really why it works and why it doesn't work. Number three, strategy develops intuitively and is repeated continuously. I need to explain that to you. When you start doing something and you have to get to this point and you're here, you will just start doing things to get here. This is natural intuition. You will continue doing that over and over and over because you have built a habit and this is your habit. 
The trouble with this is you haven't thought through your strategy. You haven't figured out if this is a smart thing to do. You just did what's natural. This will get this result. And then what happens is this strategy plateaus 100% of the time. That's why churches plateau. The only way you can get out of the plateau is to change your strategy. The only way for you to change your strategy is to figure out what it is, which is hard work. So let's take a look at this a little bit further. Number four, strategy determines your business effectiveness and efficiency. If you're not making much profit, it's probably because you have an inefficient strategy. Number five is what I just taught you up here. Strategy unimproved ultimately leads to the plateau of stagnation. Why do churches bottom out at 57 people here? The uh, number in America is 80. The churches go up, they grow to 80, and then they plateau and they stay, and then they eventually start to go down. Then the pastor leaves, he gets discouraged, does it all over again, and stays at 80 to 100. Why? The strategy of pastors of small churches are inefficient and ineffective. They grow to 60 and they plateau and the person never realizes it stopped growing because of me. I'm the one who grew it and I'm the one who stopped it from growing. It's not by praying more. Praying is, I do that a lot, but I mean, that's not the answer to this. You can ask God to help you with wisdom but you have to change your strategy. If you don't, you'll stay here no matter how hard you work. Strategy is powerful. It's how you get to your goal. So I'm going to then give you the seven steps here of um, how to think about that, and then we will conclude. Identify each step in your current strategy. What should a person do like yourself? Let's say you're saying, Man, I do want to double in, in 12 months. And I don't know about Dr. Bruce's comments that it's not too hard to do, but it isn't too hard to do. You have to learn strategy. You're just as smart as I am. I'm not smarter than you. Some of you are smarter than I am by a long shot, honestly. Well, how, how then do you do this? You sit down and start thinking, what do I do? And what can I do to make my strategy better? We taught a young man in 20 minutes how to increase his revenue by 400% by dealing with two issues. What's the key to getting more tips? People like you more. What's the key to getting a bigger amount here? They buy more food. Okay, what's the food they can buy? Before, they can have salads and that kind of stuff. Afterwards, they can, that, that's it. Well, so you're not, you don't have 50 million possibilities. These are your possibilities. And then you begin thinking, how can I get 50% of my people to buy a salad? How can I get 50% of my people to buy a dessert? Then you start thinking, who buys desserts? Who buys salads? What do you say to help a person want to get a dessert? Because that's your job, to serve them for the benefit of your company. The company wants you to sell more food. Sell more food. Okay, there are seven steps. Number one, list every step in your current strategy. Get a piece of paper and just start listing everything you do. Number two, when you get your list done, chart. Put it on a piece of paper sideways. Chart the major steps in order. Here's the first thing that happens, the second thing that happens. <laughs> one of the biggest, fastest growing churches in America isn't too far from our home where we live in the United States and we don't attend that church, but Darlene and I went to go visit it. And as you drove up, there were people everywhere with yellow uh, vests bringing you in, directing you out. And when you're a visitor, they stop everything. They come over and say, we're so glad. The person there in the parking lot, we're so glad that you're here. Please go over here. We have a special place for you and we have some hot coffee inside for you, waiting for you. And then as soon as we parked the car, a lady came up and said, hi, I'm your hostess. I'm so glad you're here. Is this uh, your first time here? Blah, blah, blah. This is a wonderful church. We love being here. And besides that, our pastor, he sent me 
to ask you to meet him for coffee when the service is over. I hope you can meet him. He's a wonderful man. And this church, oh, they're not all the way in the church. They're talking to me. <laughs> what are they doing? They're selling me on the church. Yeah, but wait. They're selling me on the church. Yeah, but that's what they're doing. Well, what's your strategy? They didn't used to have that strategy. They innovated and they kept improving it. What's your strategy? Probably one out of six visitors come back and visit you. That means six people came to a store and only one bought. Something's broken. Wait, wait, wait. Something's broken if six people visited and only one wants it. This is broken. What's broken? Are you thinking? Hmm. Where do we get on doubling your church? Woo. So, number three. Explain why each step is important to your success. Explain it. Number four. Identify. Identify the person responsible for each major step. Who's responsible for greeting the people? Who's responsible for the coffee? Et cetera, et cetera. Estimate the time each step takes to complete in your strategy. Number six, compute the total cost connected with each step. When we were planting all these gardens, we tried with seeds and too many people in the villages didn't water them because they said the seed was bad. There wasn't bad seed, but that's what their viewpoint was, so we started planting seedlings, little ones. They were planted so you could see them. And we wanted to get the cost, and the, we decided, well then, let's figure out how much we're spending for the seedlings, and let's figure we're gonna plant uh, 12 million seedlings this year. Let's go to the biggest, three biggest seedling companies and make a deal with them. What happened to our price? Whew. If we'd have kept buying them each week, we were paying this amount. When you make a deal for a year, we're paying this amount. You know this. Are you doing this? Number seven, then I'll close. Estimate the revenue you earn by each step. I hope that this session about strategy has opened your eyes that people who achieve amazing goals do so because they use their strategy and improve it. <laughs> 